What is up? Welcome back to Softcore History. I am your host for the week, Rob Fox, joined as always by a dancing Jake Goldman. What's up, baby? And Dan Register. Happy Fourth of July holiday, whatever Weekend. you want to fucking call it. This is this is uh, getting released on the third. Yeah. So I guess yeah. happy, uh, happy just fourth week. Happy America. Well, no, that's happy. We won the Battle of Gettysburg. Gettysburg was won on July third. Um, 1863, actually. So this is the uh, 160th what, what are anniversary. Doing? What are you doing? This is over Britain. We're talking about Britain. Right I know, well, we won We won a lot of important stuff. On, actually, we didn't win shit on July 4th. July 4th was like, I declare bankruptcy, the Michael Scott <laughs> meme. You know what I mean? It's like, I declare independence. Then we still had to go actually fucking get it. Yeah. Jake, I, I like how you uh, maneuvered your microphone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Very odd. I, I saw you looking at me like, what the fuck? You is and that? Rob just have like, the hardest struggles. I have no mic presence for like where it should be. All my experience is taking it off a stand and delivering hot fire jokes. I want a love at the Laugh Factory. Yeah, I want a love giggle hut. <laughs> uh, I know this is bantery, but you have uh, always threatened Dan threatens you with a love, and you're like, oh no, don't threaten me with convenience. I know. Well, well his well. wife did leave a review yesterday. All that I saw, I saw. If too you much banter, up. too much gabbing. Yeah, we got a one star. So if you could do us a favor and uh, cancel out that one star with uh, like ten five star reviews, that would be great. I on tried Apple. to scrub it, but it doesn't work. Uh, yeah, it happens. Uh, Apple, just uh, leave five stars and write a review. Uh, we'll read some. Five. I like to wait every couple of weeks to read them just so they stack up. But if you write a review, uh, we'll give you a shout out. Also uh, f- on on Spotify, it's just just a five star rating. There's no comments or whatever. You can leave a little comment on each episode that we personally can see but nobody else can right you love that there's some devastating Secret. things there's uh, some terrible things i've never there. seen them and i want to know it's like tfm comment section oh it's fuck pretty yeah. gnarly jake is ugly jake is jew there's a lot of jake jew it's just actually angrier oh. than that to be honest it's and it's at nothing it's just at the show uh and then also we have a patreon patreon.com slash softcore history Two extra episodes every week. Five dollars a month for an entire back catalog that gr- is just growing and growing and growing. All evergreen shit. Maybe a uh, topical <laughs> joke here or there. Episode will drop Wednesday, and it's on the year fifteen twenty one. Mm-hmm. That's all I'm giving away. And Ooh. look, if you haven't listened to last week's episode, you'll hear the best blues songs you've ever heard in oh your my life. God, I loved that shit. That was so much fun. I'm playing that for uh, Kate. A lot of positive yeah. feedback from that. From that one. I just wish, I'm sad I didn't discover the dirty blues until after I was married. Because <laughs> I would have made Shave Em Dry my first dance with my mom. Oh my god. I am exclusively only playing dirty blues when I have sex now. Yeah. yeah. Get That's her in the mood. Was it Lucille Bronin? Bronin? Bogan. Bogan. Yeah. Yeah. Look her up. That and then I think Harry Roy. My girl, pussy. Oh, that's aces, bro. Yeah. You nailed that. That was aces. That was so good. And then, of course, we brought it home with the cocksucker's ball. Oh. Run, cocksucker's ball. Run, cocksucker's ball. (laughs) Go so. If they weren't all dead, I would pay one. I would have put on a softcore history (laughs) event and have one of them. Why don't we put out kind of like our own Christmas version of that? Dirty Blues, a Dirty Blues we'll Christmas. We'll do a Dirty Rotten Blues Christmas Carol. album. A Rotten I Cocksuckers Christmas. I saw mommy fucking Santa Claus. So look out for that in <laughs> December. We'll be putting that out maybe November, December. I Actually, I think between me and Rob and you, fucking A, we could totally knock that out of the park. I think we could so, totally too. totally do yeah. it. Yeah. But I think we should do a calendar as well. Oh. Like a fireman calendar. What about what if we did an advent calendar? Where oh, advent just, calendar would be dope. Like little just things to just put in stupid there. things. Well, I have things. a calendar with history facts. Actually, it would be fun to source like someone that could make a holy preface, a, a holy <laughs> a foreskin, basically like just little twenty five foreskins. Yeah, no, just like little tiny trinkets from our canon, basically. Yeah, that makes sense. Like a prepus and uh, like a little stone prepus. dick. Yeah, and, a little uh, stone dick from Tarahan. Or we can that do that, but I'm talking a uh, shirtless for a 2024 calendar. I could get hot just take your that. shirt off if you want people to see you with your shirt off. Dan, you can just take it off. You're on video right Dan now. Dan Chester on Instagram. Dan just wants me to get hot too, so we can do. We are we just going to do sex shit dog, yeah. together? Yeah, <laughs> pretty much. Um, but yeah, so let's get into this week's episode. Obviously, like I said, it's uh, July 3rd. 
American Independence is celebrated on July 4th of this week, as presumably, if you're listening to this episode, you are either, you're probably on the way to or from a uh, Independence Day party. We're recovering. We're recovering. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Could be the fifth, could be the third, could be the fourth. Maybe it's the morning. I'm you're actually ready. interested you're to see salad. the, the analytics work. this week. Just, just to see how many people are listening after the fact. Yeah, yeah. I agreed. Um, but so today, obviously, we're going to get a little topical. We're going to talk about the American Revolution and what mm. caused it. Do you guys know what caused the American Revolution? Um, taxes. T. T. T taxes. I think just bad T. Bad T. Yes. That's that's Low it. T? Low, low T. T. Low T caused I the think American low Revolution. T was Actually, crazy. if anything, it'd be high T. Well, high T on our end, low T on the Brits. High T taxes. Yeah. High t- yes. That's, we, we solved it. Um, well, from my understanding, too, it was a mostly peaceful riot. It was totally... It, that was just people demonstrating. Look, I, I've said it before, and I'll say it again. The Boston Massacre was a justified police shooting. Oh, man, you're such a bootlicker. <laughs> such a boot, but such a fucking bootlicker. I don't yeah. care. It was a justified shooting. Listen, that, I'm going to try to drink at some of the same taverns this week as uh, one Samuel Adams. You're going to be in New York, right? I'll be in New York, but I'm also I'll be in Philly for a night. So okay, mm. yeah, there's a couple bars in like Center City that are literally from the 1700s. Can you get close enough to the Liberty Bell to do a funnel off of it? I've tried. <laughs> um, you can do it at night, yeah, when like nobody's nobody's watching. That makes sense. Fair enough. Uh, so the real answer to what caused the American Revolution is a whole bunch of shit. Just a whole wow! It was a real, it was a real melting pot of situations. Kind of broad strokes you're painting. Yeah, yeah. cool. So you're gonna talk about everything, huh? No, <laughs> all at once. No, in this one. Podcast. I'm gonna talk about two lesser known, but maybe pretty huge reasons for the American Revolution. One of them, probably. So people say this all the time. They're like, oh, "I didn't learn that in school. I never learned that in school. The Tulsa Tulsa race riots. I never learned that in school." And oh, like, well, here's something you didn't learn. A lot of people don't know this. Betsy Ross was more of a uh, Helen of Troy situation. They kidnapped her? Yeah. Forced, huh. forced her to sew British flags? Mm-hmm. Listen here, Bets. You're going to sew until your fingers... You've pulled sewing duty. I'm more of a I'm more of a Molly Pitcher guy, personally. Yeah, you know we don't know who that is. <laughs> we, we for sure don't know who Molly <laughs> yeah, Pitcher is. Who the fuck is. are you talking about? You know about? who Molly Pitcher <laughs> is? You don't know that? Yeah, of course we don't. <laughs> Do you know who you're talking to? <laughs> Have you... I can barely form sentences, dude. <laughs> yeah, like, come on, man. It's uh, you're the buff, dude. We're the we're the other dude. I huffed paint as a child. <laughs> I'm literally people in our Discord have been like, anytime a conspiracy topic comes up, they're like, that's for Jake. That's non history. Right. That's for him. Like things that aren't true. Or, <laughs> things uh, that are widely speculated. Yeah. That's him. a crazy person. A moron. It's me. They always recommend me. Dance big, put good freaks. She basically, I'm going to, I would, I'm going to butcher it if I get into more details than this, but she basically, uh, her husband went down during a battle, so she stepped up and started manning the cannon that he was Oh, on. she's the cannon lady. Yeah. I thought that was, is that the lady that's downtown? Nah, it's a now she one. was cannon or she operated the cannon? She operated the cannon briefly. She became a cannon. I don't believe, I do not think that that is the same uh, woman next to a cannon, uh, in downtown Austin. No, I, think, I, I think that's from the Texas Revolution, I, I think. Yeah, I think I, when you get canonized as a saint, though, they should fire you out of a cannon. That's true. That's fact. They do. Also, do you, we should do a prequel to Transformers where it's old tech, where it's like, you transformed into a fucking carriage buggy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Transformers like just missed out on looking spectacular. Oh, yeah. Because they they, the early movies with Shia LaBeouf came out like right before CGI re- hit its peak and its stride. There's some really bad CGI in Transformers. Is oh, there? It's yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. I've tried. Man, at the time. It's but if it was like five, six years later when they started, it would look well, much cri- much more crisp. Still clean. making them. They are. Always, always still a possibility. Um, Not with Megan Fox, though. No. But, uh, yeah, so we're going to talk about two lesser-known reasons the revolution started. But, again, I think both of them play outsized roles. But we never learn about them. Oh, what I was gonna say was though is that it's mostly bullshit when you're like, oh, I didn't, I didn't learn that in school. It's like, oh, really? You, you, you have a perfect memory of what someone told you 30 years ago? <laughs> Seriously, dude. Fucking, that's worse than the shit. Mandela effect yeah. bullshit. I'm not wrong. It's a different universe. It's the same thing as like they're not covering this, and they show you a link from a news site. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> but I've thought about this. I kind of wish I could go to school now. Oh, me too. You think it'd be easier? No, I d- would actually just want to go to class. I'd want to learn. I'd want to learn things. Yeah, you'd be so bored. That's why we do this podcast so I can minutes. learn. Yeah, this no, is honestly not. the most learning I do. 
JK, but for real. That's it. Probably is for me. <laughs> but no, you should work as a child in the mines. They yearn for the mines. They do yearn. Uh, kind of like... I'm sorry, Minecraft, best-selling video game of all time. One of the best-selling video games of all time. Save up some money in your teenage years and uh, your 20s, and then when you hit your 30s, you go to back to school. You know who actually advocates for that life? Tom Cruise. He thinks you should uh, be retired as an as a young person and like not have to work until you're like 35. Oh, you I think you should work until you're 35, go to school, and then reassess. You would never do anything. You wouldn't leave retirement. You would do anything you could to stay there. As someone who truly enjoys doing nothing, you're absolutely I love right. doing nothing. It's There's the nothing best. more I love than uh, doing nothing. Man. If you do what you love, you'll never work a day in your life. Goddamn right. I love doing nothing. Yeah. So... Spot on advice. You'll never work a day in your life. <laughs> cool, because yeah. I don't like working. Yeah. So I don't want to, yeah. God, Nobody even, wants to work. Even this, like writing this episode, it's, it's, you don't have a ton of fun writing it. Sometimes you do, but. I very much enjoy my free week. I am, it's the best, and I enjoy share The enjoyment is sharing it with you, too, from yeah. writing the episode. The friends we make along the way. So the first of the two things we're going to talk about today. Tell me if you heard about this one. Hear about this? Hear about this? <laughs> Remember? Uh, it's called the Hutchins, Hutchins. Hutchison letter affairs. That's letters affair. That is not a hard name to say, but no. it's just blech. Hutchinson Hutch- or Hutchins? Hutchison. The Hutchison letters uh, affair. Have you heard about this one? You know about I this? I've heard about it. Um, this is the Hamilton affair? No. Yeah. It is not. Um, Thomas Hutchison was lieutenant governor of Massachusetts Colony and then governor from, he was lieutenant governor uh, up until 1770, 1771, and then was governor from 71 to 73. Uh, as you can imagine, this was a pretty pretty hot time. He took office a year after the Boston Tea Party. I mean, he was already in office for the Boston Tea Party uh, as lieutenant governor, but then became governor right after it. Um, the letters in question were uh, written between himself and his colonial secretary, Andrew Oliver, and Thomas Waitley, who was in London as the assistant to the British Prime Minister, George Grenville, um, they were basically about the colonist protests against the Townsend Acts and how uh, the Crown and Britain should respond and how just the colonists should be dealt with in general. Uh, a lot of what they were saying is just like, a lot of what the letters were saying were just like, <laughs> and uh, I don't even think they're wrong. They're just like, God, these fucking mass holes are the worst. I, like, <laughs> I feel like they do, should not govern themselves. Like we... That should be all on the crown and, and parliament or so. Like these people are fucking animals. I tend to agree right now. You know, <laughs> to be fair, salient points. Yeah, and but it was all kind of like it was like a text thread. You know, it was not mm-hmm. serious. I mean, it was what they believed, or th- maybe we like had a thought. You know, they they were expressing thoughts, but they weren't like this is the plan. Yeah, they first we do this. They weren't talking about how to execute it. They were just like riffing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Literally. Yes. Yeah. Um, so he, he, all these letters were written when he was Lieutenant governor. Um, and he actually became, became governor after the previous governor, Francis Bernard had his own letters re leaked by radical opposition <laughs> parties. <laughs> it always be your own tweets. Never write it down. Yeah. yeah. They'll find the tweets. They'll always find the tweets. They find the tweets. Have we dropped that episode yet on the Patreon? Look at my tweets. I think it's the first episode. Yeah. yeah so spare is. bedroom dropping that on the Patreon two episodes out right now. So, even though Hutchison replaced the governor, um, the radical mass hole politicians and legislators, whatever, assembly members, fucking hated Hutchison, too. Same administration. They hated him just as much as they hated Bernard. So, over the course of uh, Hutchison's tenure, he and the— Just say Big H, because you're having a hard time saying that name. Uh, No, Hutch. I will say— Over over the course of Hutch's tenure, uh, he and the mass holes— uh, debated end- endlessly uh, in the form of writing. So I think there's a lot of published letters and stuff like that. A lot of letter duels back in this time. Oh, yeah. A lot a of discourse thing. in the paper. Well, just dueling op-eds, really. Yeah, I mean, love that, though. Need Battle more. rappers. Yeah. Yeah. Just writing notes. Well, pretty much what's going up. And um, the published... That's why I fucked your bitch, you fat motherfucker. The papers, everything was about the crown and the role of the executive versus the role of the assembly. Should should this, how much say should Parliament and um, the king have in how Massachusetts govern themselves? Blah blah blah. Uh, at one point, shock of all shocks, the mass holes said something 
untoward about Governor Hutch. Something mean. Something they cross a line. What'd they do? I don't know. They didn't say, but it was oh, it's not, it's not known. Yeah, like your wife's a fucking donkey. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> fucking firefighters getting pussy. If, it, in the if first it's time from a pussy or fire, it, it, it really. Look, I love I love this country, and I'm an American through and through. But you do sometimes have to wonder if we were right to fo- like, would you now follow a fiery person from Massachusetts? Would I follow Matt Damon into the line of fire? And the answer is yes. Yeah, Damon and Affleck, I would for sure. So I guess fair enough. Wahlberg, no fucking chance. I don't know. Wahlberg could probably talk me into it. He, yeah, he could. Come on, come on, guy. come on, man. Or I'll just beat hey. my ass. You want to end up like that Vietnamese guy? <laughs> Huh? Come on, pal. You want me to tell your mom how I made you lose your vision? Huh? <laughs> Say hi. Yeah, I'd follow him. I'm the guy <laughs> that does his job. You must be the other fucking guy. <laughs> um. So, Lord, Let's just do Boston accents. <laughs> yeah, that's episode. it for the rest of the episode. Lord, uh, Lord Dartmouth, her, you know, read what the mass holes wrote, and he beseeched Massachusetts's. Uh, agent in London, the person kind of representing them in London. They weren't officially represented, obviously, no taxation without representation. But their agent in London, he was he went up to him, went to him and was like, tell them to retract this. This is too fucking far. These people are fucking deranged. That agent was Benjamin Franklin. Oh, Benny. Living in London at the time. Fucking his way through London, I'm guessing. Oh, certainly. European making now, himself. If you recall, I think his son has already died because his wife wouldn't vaccinate him, so he just wants to be away from his wife as much as possible. Understood. Yeah. Um, With his and by the way, this was vaccinate dick. for smallpox. And um, I uh, will say what you want about uh, vaccines. I know we have a lot of Robert Kennedy supporters in the audience. Maybe. I don't know. I made that up. Um, I just wish he could bench more than 115 on England. Someone sent me that. I was like, that's not even impressive. I don't care how he's old he's. 70. I he, get that. For, no, it has nothing to do with age. It's how he looks. He should be pushing more weight than that. But I see guys like that all the time at the gym. It's the Where TRT, they're just so homie. much bigger than me, I'm like, they're, they're benching or squatting half what I do. That's the annoying thing. It's like you could be like the most strong person, but if you're not getting that like TRT... It's just not like you're not it, cheating. You're not, you're not trying. Yeah, you don't got that Hollywood bod. I don't care. I guess. Yeah, I'd rather throw the weight around. No, nah, I need to get on something. Yeah, for <laughs> sure. You, you do. You do. If you got some plugs, people, let me know. Yeah. yeah. You hey, if you got a trend guy, hit up Dan Regest. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do trend. Trend's more of like a actually just test really teen test drug. It kind of is. They're so like juicy, and they you know yeah they don't look. We don't good. need that. Yeah, might just go to the doctor. You could. That's the best way. You get real tests. But I don't have low T. Cause I keep you don't need to. That's the fun part. It's not for fixing a problem. No. The problem is that you don't look shredded enough, and they're fixing that. <sighs> you know, would it really be your own boys? Yeah. Oh, no, no. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying it Sounds that. like you're saying it. Dan, all I'm saying is you got to slam a Big Mac right before you go to the TRT clinic, right? Okay. Like maybe an hour before it's going to slam your test down. Eat, eat some microplastics on Thanks, the way baby. Yeah. yeah. I think you look great. I think you're a handsome boy. Gracias. Namaste. Um, so at this point, after Franklin was approached by Lord Dartmouth, uh, Thomas Waitley, the man who their letters had been written to, was dead. And Benjamin Franklin uh, had come into possession of about 20 of these letters. I thought you were just going to say come. <laughs> he was <laughs> coming everywhere. Yeah, yeah, Benjamin Franklin was more jizz than man probably as soon as he hit puberty. Oh, I mean, he, he got a prostitute. So many pregnant. ropes. He got a prosto pregnant, remember? Was that a Patreon episode? Was Patreon that? episode, yes. Yeah. Uh, we did a whole thing on... What ben Franklin's dick. Yeah, it was uh, It was a good episode. So Franklin was in possession of about 20 letters written between Waitley, uh, Hutch, and Oliver. Um, so naturally, Ben Franklin read this guy's mail. <laughs> <laughs> federal crime? Not yet. Yeah, there isn't even a federal government. There are no fed. <laughs> and he realized that they were about, you know how the colonists felt and how to deal with them and all this stuff. And Franklin was like, hey, this is bullshit. What they're saying, like, A, he was like, this is bullshit what they believe. B, the things they're saying about the colonists uh, aren't even true. Yeah. Like, he, they, they're they getting the t- situation totally wrong. Hey. um, They're, they're wrong about what the mass holes are upset about. So, and, 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 and because of all this, like, and because of the way they're dealing with 
the Massachusetts colony, the Massachusetts colony is getting mad at the, the monarchy and parliament. Now, at this point, Benjamin Franklin was still kind of politically neutral, but was essentially, like, loyal to the crown. He thought independence was not a great idea. Like, they were already a part of the most powerful country on earth. Why mm-hmm. fuck that up? And the freest country on earth at the time, really, at least for white men. And honestly, probably women, too. White women, too. Uh, all things considered. Relatively um, speaking, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Freest. Yes, freest. That's a good... The relative. Yeah, but, absolutely. I mean, it was it was really like you had rights there that you did, just didn't exist. Mm. The whole religion thing, big deal. Yeah. And so he was like, why fuck this up? We yeah. have a good thing going. And uh, that uh, that was a huge concern of a lot of colonists is just is like, okay, if we leave the umbrella of uh, Britain, we open ourselves up to potentially coming under more uh, oppressive regimes like France or Spain or... Who the fuck knows? Mm. Yeah, yeah. I kind of feel it. It's like we were like this teenager and like the parents were like, you can live in the pool house if you want. We're like, we're going to live in the pool house. We're going to do things our way a little bit. But still on their property. Yeah, we're still on your property. But you know what? They're letting me slide with a lot of stuff. I'm getting to kind of be responsible. And I understand it's like if we move to an apartment, our landlord's going to be a dick. Landlord's going to be a dick. You got to pay rent. Yeah, I got to pay rent. Like we're kind of chilling right now. Pool house isn't too bad. Yeah, exactly. That is exactly what Ben Franklin thought. Yeah. As far as I know. Um. So he thought, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to send these letters to the Massachusetts uh, Assembly, to select people in the Massachusetts Assembly, so that they understand that all the tension and bullshit that's happening is not because of England, not because of Britain and the king and, and the parliament, but it's because of their shitty governor and the shitty lieutenant governor and so on and so forth. So they'll direct their anger appropriately and they'll replace their local executive and not get crazy and want to leave the best country on earth at the time. Right. Sure. Doesn't sound like it probably happened. What? Doesn't sound like they followed what Ben was under the belief would happen. Well, they they listened to him for a little bit. So th- he sent the letters. Seems like they he sent the letters and somebody in Boston just pissed all over him. Uh, Yeah, they did their Boston thing. He sent the letters to Thomas Cushing. He was the speaker of the Massachusetts Assembly uh, in December 1772. He told Cushing not to publish the letters or even to share them widely. So he wiped his ass with them. To show them to a select few people who can then reassure everyone else in the Assembly and maybe in the public that Britain's chill and Hutchison is the asshole. Have a fall guy. Exactly. Yeah. Unfortunately, there it is. One of the people who got access to these letters was the man. Was Samuel Adams? Oh, your boy Sammy. That's all I got. Wicked hardcore. Wicked, hot, the biggest mass hole of all time. I am actually. I, I am of the opinion that if he were alive today, everyone would fucking hate him. Nah, good beer. Nah, cuz. I actually did drink a six-pack of Boston Lager last night. I don't th- I don't remember the last time I had a Sam Adams. It was really good, actually. I, I was surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Wow. You don't remember when you had a lager? I, I Seriously, hey, I don't kid. know if I've ever had a Sam Adams, to be honest with you. It's a fine micro-macro brew. It's macro like micro the brew. more American Blue Moon. <laughs> like Blue Moon sucks. Blue Moon's trash. Um, But it's just like, where are you? What are you? Sam Adams lager, Boston lager. What are you? I here's my opinion on it is that it is a more refined beer than you will get from even a macro brew catalog for the most part. Hmm. Even if you go like Michelob or something like that, but it's still really inoffensive. Oh, so it's accessible but good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that's think so. good. I think it's it's like the neutral beer. That's cool. I'm into that. And it's a lager. lager. Well, nobody's mad at a lager. Nah. So Sam Adams is a fucking lunatic now and forever. I mean, like, look, he helped the country and everything, but like, God damn, like, watch the, watch the show John Adams or the miniseries John Adams. He, Sam Adams is only in, like, the first two episodes, but he is a fucking asshole. Even the other Bostonians are like, like, John Adams is like, God fucking damn it, dude. You are the worst. I mean, Sam Adams is the one that's in there that's like, hang the British soldiers. I don't even give I'm a I'm sorry. Fuck. Do you think rational, reasonable people are the ones that start revolution? They sure aren't. No, typically not. They sure aren't. Even if they call themselves that. I posted that meme the other day. The people who did all the killing and the reign of terror in the French Revolution, you know what they were called? 
The nice guys. Kind of. The Committee of Public Safety. <laughs> they cut off thousands of people's heads. They were the CPS. Keeping the <laughs> public safe. Yeah. God damn. Um, so Adams did, though, follow Franklin's request to not publish them or copy them or whatever. But j- just barely. Just barely. You know what I mean? It's like if someone's like, if you're like, don't touch me, and someone puts their face an inch away from you, he's like, I'm not touching you. I'm not yeah. touching you. I'm not touching you. It's childish. Yeah. That's what Sam Adams did. He immediately told fucking everyone in the assembly, everyone everywhere, how about how they had damning letters. Just fucking fucked up letters from the governor. All kinds of fucked up shit. The worst shit you could imagine. Bro, you seen these letters? They're a nightmare. You wouldn't fucking believe these letters, bro. Yeah. And he would leak little bits of them. Oh, so he's like, giving them like, like a out taste. of context sentences. Yeah, you can everything. spin anything you want. He's just giving them clips. He's riling, giving them sound bites. He's riling. getting the tweets, man. Yeah, yeah, all that. He's like kind of like the viral like tweet guy where it's like, can you believe he said this? And it's like clip of five seconds, and it's like you don't have the full. Context. Can you believe yeah. Roseanne Barr said kill all the Jews? Did she say that? Out of it was sarcasm. She is Jewish. I thought so, <laughs> and I was like, I don't think she meant that. Yeah, no. Because she was like, oh, because we control the media. They like, took they took that clip on Theo Vaughn, and everyone's just like, look, she wants to kill all the Jews. Yeah. <sighs> Here's Boy. the thing. We're all out for each other. Or all out for ourselves anyway. Right. So there can only be one. one we're, like Highland- we're, like one we're like Highlanders. You only want there to be one left? That's right. And so far, I'm safe here. Do so. I get to be in this contest? You don't want to fight this fight. Okay. Yeah, you know you'd be good at. You'd actually be too good at it. It's a meek fight. <laughs> it's not exactly pounds for pounds in the cage, man. Also, like I know you're Irish, but you look like you marched through Paris in 1940. I don't think so, man. I I do. It's my Portuguese skin. Oh my god. Um, he's very Iberian. Yeah, I guess, man. Yeah, I don't fucking know. Hutchinson, meanwhile. Like, he knew that Adams was saying all this stuff, and he knew what he wrote in the letters, and he was like, what What are you talking about? It's like everything I everything that w- that is in those letters, I have said it publicly, which he had. He had basically written everything that was in the letters, like he had probably, like, what was in the letters was probably a less eloquent, articulate version of what he believed. Yeah. But it was like, he's like, I've said all of this. Like, I've represented that view here. I've represented that view here. And, and like, I, what the fuck are you talking How about? How are you trying it's to damn- get me on things I am very open he's about? like, this yeah. isn't a gotcha, you fucking dick. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, like when they tried to blackmail, I think it was, like, the president of the Philippines, I want to say. And they're like, we have you having sex on tape with a whore. And he's like, dude, can I get copies? I want to send it to my friends. Uh, someone tried to do that to Yarmer Yager, the hockey player, and he released it. They like sent him the video, and and they were like, "I ha- we I filmed it. You would need to give me like a hundred thousand dollars." And he was just like, <laughs> and posted it. Yeah, no, that's the best. Like, oh, you want to watch me bang? Cool. Especially if a good performance. Yeah. Let, let the world see that. Yeah, like obviously, if you're like groveling like a little piggy, and you come in six seconds, like little yeah, pig. Yeah. A little bottom pig. Yeah, if you're a little bo- God, or pig it. bottom. I'm sorry, pig damn bottom. It, I hate that, but yeah, if you're pig bottom, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah. squealing with joy. Um, but Cushing and Adams. Now Adams is a fucking psycho, but Cushing and Adams and John Adams and other more reasonable people, um, were also alarmed at what they read, um, and wanted to publish them. Uh, and they asked, they asked Franklin, they're like, are you sure, man? Like, this is pretty wild. Can we, we think we should publish this. Do you have the emails? No, they burnt, they bleached the server or whatever the fuck. Damn it. Yeah. Uh, and Franklin was like, no, don't do that. Um, but eventually John Adams published the letters in the Boston Gazette in 1773. So you do have the emails. Yeah, they put the emails out there. They put the emails in the Boston Gazette. It caused a political fucking firestorm in Massachusetts. People went, they lost their fucking minds. Did they riot? Yeah, all kinds of shit. And and they burned Hutchison and Effigy and and all that shit. I mean, they fucking went nuts. And in England, the parliament and the king and were like, 
what the f- – oh, by the way, the letters were essentially about – well, I already said that, right? They were like, yeah, maybe these people need less control over themselves. Yeah, like, yeah. It's like, like maybe they, make the executive branch stronger. They need a daddy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe have the parliament appoint no uh, free will. a council because <laughs> these people from Massachusetts are fucking insane. Um, anyway, people, so people in England and the, the parliament and the crown were like, dude, what the fuck? People are insane. Maybe they do need less freedom. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Um, that's, I, that's how you know you're doing it right, by the way. That's what? how you know you're living free. <laughs> when someone's like, good God, someone needs to control you externally. Yeah. Like, yeah, that's when you're crushing. That's the Northeast, baby. You are all we need sinful. We need direction. You do. We do. Yeah, I think we put our best foot forward when somebody tells us where to stand. You're step. just building things toward the sky because you want to see how high they can get. I mean, I guess if today you told me. Hey, we're starting something. It's big. It's a guy from Philly, a guy from Boston, and a guy from rural Virginia, and they're all starting this shit up. You, you win? Yeah, I'd be like, no. Big, no. <laughs> what? Ugh. What, do you make 106% alcohol? Right. What, what happened? How did you make it more? <laughs> <laughs> is this like lacrosse league? What is going on? We combine crack, meth, and lacrosse. Yeah. And it's be like, Paul no. Rabel's in. <laughs> Are done. Like, no, thank you. Um, <coughs> this was a huge scandal in England, too, by the way. Humongous fucking scandal. Um, because the letters were to the, the prime minister's, like, assistant or whatever, uh, or whatever he was. Uh, one of the biggest questions in England was, of course, who leaked the letters. Uh, and no one, other than the select few mass holes, knew it was Ben Franklin. Very few people knew it was Ben Franklin. Mm. So the leaker was a huge question mark. Um, it was, this was like a WikiLeaks type of thing. What, I mean, what if Ben Franklin leaked his own paper? That'd be crazy. Leaked what? <laughs> leaked it himself. He did. Oh. I'm he was the one that leaked it to the Massachusetts... Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I thought... Never mind. Proceed. I'm, oh, well, it is I'm, a mystery. We never found out who gave Franklin the letters. Right, right, right. We have yeah, still yeah. not found out who, who gave Franklin the letters. Yeah, no, my bad. Um, but the leaker was Ben Franklin. So everyone want to know who it was. Like I said, uh, Waitley was dead at this point. So it is a like a much ado about nothing at this point, too. Really, like and the guy's already dead. Waitley's dead, but the th- whole thing is now Massachusetts wants to secede more than ever. They're just chirping the governor. Yeah, because it's like it, it's honestly just like a pot stirrer. You know, it's mm-hmm. just like fuck. But now keep in mind the the Boston massacre has already happened. Okay. All the all the the first round of taxation like the Stamp Act and everything like that that's already in place. These people are already fucking furious. Okay, this context helps. I was actually kind of losing the thread for a minute. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. All, so the, we're yeah. about halfway <coughs> we're about halfway through the list of things that caused the American Revolution that you read about in your history textbook. Okay. Okay. So okay. Letters, letters. What? Two letters? What letters? What? He's talking about the letters. Back to the letters. We're just bullet points right here. Just Quick synopsis. Just yeah. What caused the war? Leader in the clubhouse right now. Letters. Yeah. I mean, and this I, was, if it wasn't the straw that broke the camel's back, it was goddamn close to it. But it caused something even more important than that. But we'll get that to that, get that in a second. So Waitley was dead, and Waitley's brother William was in charge of his estate. He accused a man named John Temple of leaking the letters. He did not, obviously. Temple denied the claim and was fucking furious. So he challenged uh, William Waitley to a duel. To a duel in Hyde Park, Jersey. No, Hyde Park, London. So like their Central Park, I think. Hyde Park, oh. Austin. <laughs> so I thought you could only duel in Jersey. That's my understanding. It is. You have to take a boat. <laughs> it's a whole thing. Got to have witnesses. Got to schlep the over. The witnesses got to turn their backs. Uh, well, the the witnesses or the, or the seconds or whatever those are optional. But they have their backs turned. Yes. Mm, maybe. Can't I witness I the murder. Know. So they dueled in Hyde Park on December 11th, 1773. Uh, there were a couple problems with the duel, though. For one thing, Temple was, like, pretty fat and deaf. <laughs> Sick. Uh, for another, it was dumping Now, rain. Temple was the challengee. Temple challenged him. He was the challenger because Waitley, okay. William Waitley accused him of leaking his brother's letter. But he's fat and deaf, and yeah. he knows this. And he, yeah, he's aware of he both. Knows, he knows himself. Man has honor. Yeah, man has code. Honorable. Yeah, so they fire pistols at each other, miss. Didn't try to miss. Big wasn't target. like a, wasn't a gentlemanly thing. Like they just fucking miss. So they pull out their swords. 
and they run at each other and immediately get into a fucking slap fight. And they rolled around in the mud for like an hour before someone walked by and made them stop. <laughs> an hour? That's what it said. That is a long fight. I know. I've never seen a fight go on for an hour. Like, at that, like, the person stopping is like, you guys suck at fighting. I think that's kind of what happened. Like, like, oh, you guys are pathetic. What's the, what's the equivalent with two, like, adult incompetence? Like, if you walk up and you're like, all right, boys, break it up to, like, two little kids. Like, you're walking past a playground. There's two, like, nine-year-olds in a fist fight. Yeah, it's like, you're come just on. Like, all right, boys, that's enough of that. You done did it. Yeah. Now this, shake hands. The important part. Get in my van. <laughs> I'm a stranger. <laughs> Yeah, actually, you wouldn't break up that fight if you were a child molester. You'd wait till one gets knocked unconscious, and then you're like, "Good work, <laughs> jackpot, thanks, Billy." Um, but Waitley did get badly wounded by Temple's sword at some point in the fight. So, at this point, feeling responsible for the violence and not wanting any more bloodshed or accusations because it's such a scandal, Franklin finally came forward as the leaker, and he ju- he justified his actions. And tell me if this doesn't sound like the worst excuse you would hear on Twitter. You know what I mean? For a leaker. Okay. Yeah. He justified his actions by being like, well, <laughs> all letters between public officials should be published anyway. There shouldn't be any private correspondence if you're a public official. Yeah, that's a uh, I'm making up rules as I go kind of thing. I, I re- yeah. tend to agree. Right now, too, if you're a public figure, ourselves included, your text should be out to the you public. Just check, you can check their text. Their G- you open their Gmail, fucking anything. Yeah. Yeah. I should see all your DMs, your sex. <laughs> Dan just wants your. You live in a literal glass house if you're a public, if you are uh, uh, in government. Well, that's the thing I always like crack up about. It's like they're they're just trying to do a hit job on them. It's like, what do you think the public eye is? Roses, right? People, if you are prominent in this country, people want you. Don't to ruin even you. have to be prominent. You really don't. True. Actually, there yeah. are so many. There's so much like pro- podcast drama and beefs that like Dude, I the Twitter I would shit? think no one would care about, but I guess it's like it's a whole a industry. Yeah. That's why yeah. that was one thing at TFM back in the day where we never did it. Thank God. But like uh, that was uh, one way. There was a bar- conversation where they're like, "Let's start some fires between you guys." Yeah, that or like between other sites because that was how people forget. That's one way Barstool got really big is all their Twitter personalities were really Beefs. antagonistic. Yep. Yeah, we, we had some run-ins with them, but we did. But I was always like, I. It was so funny, and that's why I n- never really took them super seriously. Uh, it's just because I mean, I w- I would have worked there, no no question, because it was a great audience. But like, um, it was just like I'm here to like write. Like I'm here to make stuff. Like I'm not. It's here. not a reality show. I'm just trying to be funny. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, there's definitely a difference between like the people who are like, all right, this is my job, and there's people that's like, my job is me. Right. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? It's like I'm becoming. This I'm thing. a brand. Yeah. Even with this podcast, dude. Like all I want to do is talk about history and like write an outline, and, like fuck around. Like I'm not trying to like figure out how to make money doing it. That's no, nice. fuck that. Uh, for the love of the game. Yeah, yeah. No, but I mean, like, I'm not trying to, like, make myself a fucking character. Where, like, you know what I mean? Like, a, or, like, make myself a brand. Like, the, I would rather the I would rather the show be a brand. No, this is a launching pad. Everyone knows this. We're an incubator for ourselves. Mm. And we built the incubator for ourselves. Rob's going to leave us for the first. Dan Carlin's going to hit him up and just be like, no, it'd be an acting gig. Hey. <laughs> it'd be an acting gig. I'll leave you for that in a second. He oh, would okay. leave for, like, a, a, a spot role, like a one-episode what would he even, would even, would even be at that point? It's one he episode. Just, he'd come back that's a like, month that's later. That's like saying I'm leaving you because I'm going on vacation to Hawaii for a week or something. Like, Why, uh, you got to really drag him? No. Right now? They're like, hey, we got to we gotta have you on set for at least three weeks for SVU. I'd be like, so we yeah. could handle that. So yeah. I know, I would like, hope so. Yeah, no, we, he would be like, I'm out. I got an agent. I did my episode. Now I'm on to bigger and better things. Next role. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Big fucking time. <sighs> Suck my dick. Um, I mean, I would. Uh, I, and we would gladly bid you do. You have to pay us for your share, though. Yeah, who are we replacing them with? Um, AI Rob. We get a computer. Chat oh, that's so easy. Joke bot. Joke bot, yeah. yeah. You're just like, what would Rob Fox say about this? Ben Franklin had a neat penis. <laughs> that's, dude. Nailed it. Do you have it already? <laughs> <laughs> We're on... Chat GPT writes all this for me. We're on microphones so much that I think we could... Probably put out a couple episodes where we don't have to actually come to the office. It's the problem, though, where it's like we didn't check it beforehand, and it's just terrible. It's just like, what if it's better? <laughs> it's just like Robin, Dan. Or like, but eventually know, you yeah. become flanderized, right? Because that's what AI is doing now, where they're pulling from their own art. 
Yeah, it's pretty funny. So they're like kind of getting incestuous with their ideas, essentially. Yeah. Jake runs a laser beam in space. <laughs> <laughs> it's just eventually just because, hey guys, I'm Jewish. Laser! <laughs> Illuminati, thank yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, that would still be pretty good, though. I think people would enjoy that. What? I think I was, people would like that. I was that. saluting my masters. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um. So, yeah, if he didn't. Franklin was just like, all right, someone's going to fucking kill somebody else. So it's, I got to just come forward. So he published a letter on Christmas Day saying that he did it. No days off. Mm-mm. Christmas Day? What are you doing? Content never sleeps. Well, he didn't write on Christmas Day. He published it on Christmas Day. Even Still. He had to hit publish. Which was always funny to me, by the way, just to say one more content thing real quick. At TFM or anywhere, it was like, yeah, we always have so, so much lower traffic on Christmas Day or Thanksgiving Day. And I'm like, why? You're sitting around all day doing nothing. I'm on my phone so much on those days. Most of the time. Rob was encouraging them to make us work on holidays. He did. The lower paid people, certainly, yeah. yeah. Rob's big The, bull, the bullpen. The, yeah. Mm, well, bullpen came running out a little later, but he got ahead of the race. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Franklin was, uh, called before the Privy Council, uh, which is just like a, I think in like sort of inner circle parliament, uh, royal council or whatever. Um, and this was by the way, he was called before the council or he published his letter and that was like a couple days after the Boston Tea Party happened. So England was fucking pissed. Like everyone in parliament, everything was fucking hated the colonies, hated anyone on their side. So uh, the Privy Council, uh, the guy. You think somebody went for a swim a couple days after, and you could like taste it. It's like a. I, so would, I do tea. wonder if it killed fish. You would almost think it had Ca- caffeine. It made it candy fish. Yo, made Swedish fish. I didn't know this, but like weapons grade sonar can actually like rip shit apart. I mean, it's it is something. Right? Yeah, like, like it's th- not nothing. So like, yeah, I didn't know this, but like, if you were like swimming by like a weaponized machine with sonar on it yeah and it went off it would like make your fucking brain explode out of your skull dude Sweet. same with bluetooth that's why uh airpods are terrible for you dude what are you talking about i just listen to hot beats on that shit i know but it's frying your brain but there's internet all around me right now all that 5g hell yeah dude it's another rfk platform upload it <laughs> get my brain in that shit let's go about time get singular yeah i'm trying to be Singular wireless. I don't see singularity. Is that more oh. absurd than Trump saying that uh, the wind turbines cause cancer? Did he say that? Yeah. Did he mean it? I don't know. Yeah. That's uh, what. A, what? A, come on. What does Trump say that you can honestly take without a grain of salt? The I sun think he, doesn't he hurt just my says eyes. things. Really, it doesn't. That really. is the best photo of a living president or any president ever. Staring into Him a solar eclipse. Looking at a solar eclipse, staring directly at it and pointing at it like there it is. That is my favorite photo of any president ever, and I thank him for I that. I agree. It's fantastic. That should be in that should be on our it should be on our flag. Put it on the dollar bill. Yeah. <laughs> Just right in the center. Put it on the thousand dollar bill when inflation. Well, but then gets you put it. the uh, shining eye that was on top of the pyramid above it, so that's what he's looking at. And it's at. pointing back down at him and yeah. he's giving him a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. It's just a cartoon one. I was like, eh. It's like Buddy uh Buddy Supreme Jesus. Eye. Yeah. 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 Um so Franklin stood there in the Privy Council as the Solicitor General Alexander Wedderburn uh, just ripped him a thousand new assholes for what he did. Like, was just like, you are a piece of shit, a thief, you're dishonorable, fuck you. Um, He was then removed from his position um, uh, about being Boston's agent or whatever uh, um, as well. Like, the Board of Trade dismissed Franklin from his post as the Colonial Postmaster General. Move from fucking everything. Fired, 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 fired. You know, that title's a little bit of a tongue twister. So Colonial Postmaster General. It's a lot. Yeah. It's a mouthful. A lot of... uh, I'm okay losing that title. Yeah. CPG. You just got to breathe it. It's fair. Uh, But yeah, Franklin, by the way, as I said earlier... A man of many hats. Politically neutral up to that point. He left London and England fucking disgraced. Had to go back to... um, His... To the colonies. <laughs> yeah. And after that, after his run-in with the Privy Council and the Board of Trade, he returned to America in 1775 being like, fuck England, let's go independent. Fuck All England. All of that, huh? Fuck England, we ball. 
Yeah. Yeah. So thanks to these leaked letters, the mass holes became basically entirely convinced at this point that they needed to be independent because they thought they had straight up confirmation mm-hmm. that the uh, powers that be in Britain wanted to give them less governance over themselves, less independence over themselves. So they thought they needed more independence. Um, and then we also got one of our MVPs yeah, for the revolution. Thanks to those letters. John Paul Jones. Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin. <laughs> ben Franklin. The ben guy we've just been <laughs> These letters. By I, I, thought was, has, I thought he was setting up for like another. Another person. like, oh, another cameo drop. And yeah, it's like, yeah. oh shit, J. Cole's on this track too? What the fuck? And these yeah. letters. Oh, and hard from the rafters. <laughs> the, these letters like raised the temperature enough that they were fucking going crazy. This, they, they honestly raised the temperature enough that they may have kind of directly led to the atmosphere that made the Boston Tea Party possible. Um, and the Boston Tea Party directly inspired what the colonists, you may remember this from history class, dubbed the intolerable intolerable acts, which did literally lead to the American Revolution. Yeah, for sure. Um, so this scandal, like I said, it gave the col- it gave the colonies one of its MVPs and arguably its inciting incident. Damn. Okay. Wow. That's a big deal. I had no I never learned that in history class. How do you know? I don't. Yeah, you, yeah, probably, I probably, you probably didn't. I, I could have gotten. We probably glossed over it. Probably got a whole week on that. Yeah, just don't even remember it. You know how much history I've learned that I haven't retained. Right. Yeah, but that was a humongous little piece of the reason we went to war. You know, g- declared independence. While all of this was going on, there was also something global and fucked up going on that. Uh, directly uh, and intricately, intricately involved both the colonies and England. The first ever, literally the first ever, modern banking crisis. Oh, no. Nothing hurts more. Nothing, like, that is the financial equivalent of, like, a summer for crisis. Like, yeah. For making people crazy. Now, are the Venetians still around at this point? Mm, not really. The, the banking center is England, uh, is London and Amsterdam. Okay. And, and to a lesser extent, S- Edinburgh. The Swiss? I don't know if they're really players yet. Okay. Yeah. I don't Late know to the game. Be yet. But yeah, this is post-Medici kind of shit, too. For sure. Yeah. Oh, L- no, London v- is absolutely... Venice the was still hanging on. Or so. mm. I would say at this point, London is inarguably the financial center of the world. For a long time it was. But Amsterdam is still... I mean, it's look. London's still a huge financial center, probably number two. It's right? number two. It, number two. Yeah, I mean, as far as like open and transparent financial centers, yes. Yeah. Number two, I would say, other than you know, possibly some Chinese Beijing or arguments, but yeah, I would say London. So, like I said, uh, the colonies in England were directly and heavily involved in this. If the letters pissed New England off, the banking crisis was what maybe put the South over the edge. Yeah. And this was happening at the exact same time. And it all started because of one, literally, because of one dumb asshole. I love that. Yeah. That's, I believe in it, like, when people are like, oh, he's just an idiot. It's like, do you know how often, how often idiots have changed the course of history? Yep. It's most of it. It's all of it? Yeah. Almost all of it. So you're just calling Sam Adams just a moron. I don't think he was smart. I think he was a brute. I have a hot. Yeah, I do too. I think he. I have a much higher regard for John Adams than Sam Adams. Uh, certainly not. You're more of a John. You're more of a Sam. A Sam guy? I'm a Sam boy. Sam That's guy. Just surprising no one. I, yeah, I'm not. Not surprised in the least. He got drunk, started a revolution in a bar, and uh, yeah, actually did his part. I'm like John. Um, yeah, getting drunk and starting a revolution in a bar shouldn't be a good prerequisite for everybody. That sounds like a bad hang. Yeah. yeah also, again. That has led to some pretty bad things in history. Most revolutions, look, the American Revolution is history uh, is I, written by the winners. Yeah, well, we won, I guess. Actually, that's not even necessarily Although, true. Losers do document pretty hard how bad. Well, they how are. do they? And document I will say, Sam if history was written England. by the winners, I don't know why people hold the French Revolution in such a high regard. Because that is the, the second worst revolution. Yeah, you get Napoleon. Napoleon was a good leader. He was dope, but he wasn't. Good. They they ended up with a, a monarch. stronger monarch. Yeah, but sometimes it's the effort too. Yeah, 
But it was just bad. They should, they should dude. honestly, they should study the American Revolution. Well, we the also French. wanted to make George Washington king. Who? Us. The, the country. Yeah, we're idiots. We're <laughs> like, oh, let's get rid of the monarch. Oh, George, you want to be a monarch? And he's like, nah. We'll get to that. We'll, we'll talk about have that. You, have you heard about when George Washington became president and he wrote Congress? Like, oh, I'm so excited to be president. And then Congress is like, we need to write a letter back. And they're like, we're so excited to have you. And he's like, thanks. I'm excited you're excited. And all the while, he's having, I believe it was either, I think it was Thomas Jefferson, write that to Congress. And then Congress is like, hey, Tom, write this to George Washington. He's writing both. He's Tom's writing both sides himself. of it back and forth. Why was Congress having him? I think Jefferson was the Secretary of State. I don't know. Under, uh, under uh, Washington. It, it, I'm probably Why do you hate Washington? Right. We'll do my Washington. I don't hate Washington. I just think. You're doing your hit piece on I Washington. I got to do my hit piece on Washington. But that requires me, like, days of, of getting hammering shit out. Um, and not my normal we, life. We all have this, like, aspirational topic we want to talk oh, yeah. about. But we're like, I don't have the time for it. But if I, I did, we'd be fired. Just wait. Just fuck. Just wait. wait for that one. Um, so, as a result of the Townsend Act... Uh, and the breakdown of the Boston non-importation agreement, this period was marked by tremendous growth in exports from Britain to the American colonies. Uh, and all of these massive exports were helped propped up by British mer- uh, credit that British merchants granted to American planters, hence mostly the South, because uh, we're talking cash crops here, tobacco, cotton, rice, indigo, blah, blah, blah. My God, were they giving credit out every which way they could. Ever heard of a bubble? Yeah, I have. Um, so they didn't have enough in the coffers to, in case the credit, the stuff didn't come they back. They sure fucking did not. Yeah. I mean, how do you think crises work? Yep. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so, I mean, look, it was obvious to anyone kind of looking maybe that there should have been a, a situation. Um, the prosperity of both British and colonial economies, um, there's a lot of uh, a lot of that was due to speculation and the establishment of uh, quote unquote dubious financial institutions. What? For example, in Scotland, bankers adopted the notorious practice of drawing and redrawing fictitious bills of exchange just in an effort to expand credit. Oh, they, God. Just, they were just, I, I guess, making up how much money they had to get better credit. Well, yeah, and they inflate because of circulation, yeah, things like that. Yeah, pretty pretty standard there. But also, keep in mind, you don't want deflation either. That's actually worse. Yes, I agree. Yeah. Because then no one's... Especially in Boston, no deflation. No. They're anti-deflation. Mm-mm. Well, well, they, they were for deflation. What, and then what, what is this joke? What am I missing? Deflate gate? It's a Tom Brady, uh, it's Tom yes, Brady yes, joke. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry, oh, guys. Ask. Deflation. I don't think they would even. Oh my god, you're such a spass. The text between the two ball boys was my favorite part of that entire thing. That was cute. It was cute. It was was a good buddy comedy in the middle of a scandal. And Uh, how they made it seem like so kind of like malicious and Tom just likes his balls a little flat, dude. Yeah, it was. They made this whole big thing out of it. I was like, yeah, all right, whatever. No one cares. Literally every sport ever has something like that. Some type of cheating baseball. I never really cared about the Astros cheating, to be quite honest. Never cared. I didn't care about the the Black Sox. I didn't either. I remember you, yeah, at the time when that happened, I remember you just kind of shrugging. I was just like, Let game is play. a game. Let them play. They yeah. want to win. The Black Sox don't are the to. only one that they deserve shit to. because they were throwing it yeah. to get paid. Right. Taking steroids, deflating your ball, Jameis stealing Wilson, signs. Or Jameis Winston also. Point shaving. shaves. Notoriously. Points. Dude, watch anything from his Heisman year. It was it, the year after. Or though. the year after his Heisman, yeah. It's like. First half, Jameis was just throwing left-handed. Or is he left-handed? And then he, ought to, yeah. he always brought him back. Oh, because he, he was awesome. Yeah. I hate him. I hate Florida State. He was the best athlete out there because he could point shave a first half spread. Jameis was awesome. Yeah. He was incredible. Um, Everyone made money. <laughs> so there were signs of the impending, impending crisis, but no one really cared. Like, there were overstocked shelves and warehouses. Uh, we know well about that. And about how that causes a financial crisis. Yep. Um, th- these were all overlooked by British merchants and American planners because they're all like, "Yeah, we're rich, whatever." Yeah. How bad can it get? Right. So we'll s- we'll weather it. So there's this big fucking bubble. American planters, rich. Is that why the the peanut man has the monocle on the top? Yes, of? that is exactly why. If you, you want to look right. at the head of the cabal, look first at planters, Mister Planter. Yeah. yeah. He owns slaves, Mister um, Peanut. No one talks about that. No, no one's talk? talking about that. Yeah, you know what? No one's talking about 
Provides eight links. Um, <laughs> enter Alexander Fordyce. From 1757 on, he was a partner in the banking house of Neil James Fordyce and Down. Under Fordyce's guidance, the bank did all kinds of shady shit. Fordyce in- sounds like a shady guy you meet in the back alley. Al- yeah, Alex oh, Fordyce. It's Jimmy Fordyce. Hey. <laughs> Even <laughs> Alex rattle. Fordyce. Alex Fordyce sounds like a guy who always has cocaine. Alex Fordyce does sound... Why is it always an Alex? He's got his own weighted dice. <laughs> when he's got he his own craps. mini spoon. Yeah. He's got like a little necklace pendant that yep. pops out a spoon. He's like, yep. you want to hit? And yep. then you do it. And he's like, that was ketamine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's him. It sounds exactly like that. Yeah. Uh, so under Fordyce's guidance, the bank, like I said, did all kinds of shady shit, including speculation, which is, by the way, just like day trading. Ga- it's like gambling on stocks. It's yeah. not speculation is putting a lot of money on. I mean, it's, it's gambling. Rob, it's it all is. gambling. No, this is like unless you're in ga- Congress. This is like gambling, gambling. Yeah, this is like s- speculation is the stock equivalent, from what I can tell, of sports gambling. You know what I mean? It's just like, man, the Yankees are a lock today. They're playing the A's. Fuck, I'm not gonna fucking lose today. Um, we have a lot of that still. I'm sure we do. Yeah, it's just called different things. Um, they also this is how shady they were, by the way. They used plants and informants to find out the details of the Peace of Paris in 1763. Uh, to get an advantage on um, just investing and stuff like that. The Peace of Paris was the treaty that ended the Seven Years' War, a.k.a. the French and Indian War, a.k.a. like the technically kind of the first world war, yeah. the first global war. They, multiple, yeah. They had informants in there giving them information so they could gamble better. Yeah, it's called the game, dude. They are the game, yeah. yeah. You got if, if there isn't one, you make one. And this this dude gambled with fucking every cent he was given. And if you make it and you're losing, take your ball and go home. That's right. Oh, funny you mentioned that. We'll get to that. In July 1770, Fordyce uh, collaborated with two planters named John and William McIntosh uh, from Granada. And th- he borrowed 240,000 guilders in bearer bonds from the Dutch bank Hope & Co., uh, William, there were a couple other guys, rich guys oh, in on the scheme as well. Wait, they were betting bonds? I guess, yeah. Huh, Fordyce took all this shit and speculated with it. Just mm. gambled it all on the market. Fun. And to be fair, for a while, he was winning. But he didn't mm. tell his partners he was. He wa- it wasn't like a big gambling ring. He's like, I got this, boys. I'll go gamble and we'll take the profits. He made them think it was a legitimate business. And then he took all that money and gambled with it. Yeah, uh, so he's kind of like doing a, almost like a Ponzi. Like, yeah. Like, there's good returns. Look at the business. Yeah. But it's like, I'm just fucking winging it. It's like, like our grandparents giving us savings bonds. Oh, you This know, will be worth $50 in 40 years. Yeah, and then. It's insane. It was supposed to be worth more than what it said on it. It really hey, wasn't. get this. <laughs> it, it was wasn't. worth $52 when we cashed it. It has negative interest. <laughs> it's actually worth less. It is. <laughs> yeah. Uh Eventually, these partners showed up just to make sure the money was okay, you know? And you can't just show, you can't email them a statement or whatever. Mm -hmm. According to Fordyce's biographer, uh, quote, it is said he succeeded in quieting their fears uh, by the simple expedient of showing them a pile of banknotes, which he had borrowed for a few hours just for the purpose of making them think he had money. Oh my God, that's investor meeting shit. Yeah, that's. All right, everybody, listen up. We got investors coming tomorrow. Wear pants. <laughs> comb your hair. I have done that meeting so many yeah, times. It's startup culture. It's Oh, man, this guy knows the game, dude. He does, but the house always wins. It do. He lost heavily at the beginning of 1771. Uh, there were fluctuations in the market because of a dispute with Spain over the Falkland Islands. But he really fucked up. Man, Falk- Falkland Islands really. I know. Have a history, a weird history. I don't know what conflict what's for very minimal return. There's not enough space for that much conflict. I don't really know what the like appeal of them is. I guess they maybe control like a shipping lane. That has to be what it is. Yeah, it's a it's a landmass in a big open space of water. Um, but one in a useful big open space, yeah, like yeah, yeah. Hawaii so, or something. Right, right, right. Yeah, it's it's definitely a lane. Um, so <laughs> he made his biggest mistake in. At the end of 1771, early 1772, Fordyce decided to go all in on a short. Oh, no. <laughs> he shorted tea? Kind of. 
What? <laughs> Close. How do you call it? You shorted your boys. The Eagles. <laughs> no. <laughs> he shorted the East India Company. Uh, wow, that's that seems historically stupid. <laughs> that seems really bold. <laughs> it's a, I'm going to short Amazon. <laughs> like, what the fuck are you talking about? Listen, dude? there's no way they could they could get better right now. Right. He took a huge short position on the East India Company. Thinking what, pirates were going to like destroy their company? I don't fucking know. They're going to run out of heroin <laughs> or <laughs> opium. Yeah. Opium for the Chinese or yeah. you know, India is going to overthrow them. In May of 1772, the East India Company stock price shot up a lot. Oh on God. Monday, June 8th, 1772, it could no longer be hidden. Fort Dice was fucking bankrupt. So he, he he owed up. He had to owe. Oh, yeah. Yeah. His bank went insolvent the next day. His bank went totally insolvent. Like, just fucking was done. Was he a masochist? Did he enjoy this? Was this planned? Are he you? He certainly <laughs> enjoyed the, the, the game, right? He enjoyed the gamble. You like the throw, man. Yeah. Um, the next day, Fort Dice fled to France. <laughs> Coward. Just got the fuck out of Dodge. Let me yeah, what does bankruptcy mean back then? It means basically what it means now. You got to liquidate your assets and give it to whoever the fuck you owe money to. Or you to. pick up and run. Yeah. Yeah, one or the other. Uh, on June 22nd, dubbed Black Monday. Tell me oh, if you heard that one before. Yeah, I have. Yeah, that's when we all got fired from Grand X yeah. the first time. London went fucking insane once Four Dice was officially declared bankrupt. Hordes of creditors showed up at the banks and was like, give us our money back now, or they attempted to withdraw all their... There was a bank run. Oh, of course. On yeah. everything. As a result, 20 banks went bankrupt by the end of June. So Damn, so it was, it was a solid cascade then of bank Oh, and it yeah. hit fucking the Netherlands. It hit everywhere. One um, dude. <laughs> one, one dude, dude shorting, it. essentially, like you said, Amazon or Apple. Yeah. Like a moron. Led to a massive bank run. Destroyed at least 20 banks. There were tales of, you know, merchants. Uh, oh, hey, I'm sorry. Everyone that listens to this is going to hate it. This is why there needs to be a regulation on the regulatory board that doesn't involve people that control money and budgets in the government. <laughs> Stop touching the mic like that. Sorry. <laughs> but it's fu- that's why the Fed exists, you fuck. Yeah. Like, end it because we don't understand money. Like, dude, it's how it works now. This is how it works Pretty much. Yeah, I'm gonna um, get I'm I expect to be flooded. Well, that's that. fine. Yeah. Fucking communist. Yeah. Uh Jake W. Goldman on Instagram. There were, of course, stories about bankers or whatever slitting their throats, shooting themselves, hanging themselves. Okay, so happy story. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh news of the crash in uh in Britain reached Thomas Jefferson on July eighth, seventeen seventy two. Uh British merchants after the crash basically immediately uh, called on debt repayment to American planters, but American planters did not have that fucking money. Yikes. Because of the economic boom before the crisis, planters were not prepared for uh, debt liquidation, um, and now they couldn't get any more credit to continue expanding their yeah. plantations so or whatever, out. get yeah. more, get new shit, get more slaves, whatever the fuck. Planters were unable to produce and sell their goods without the credit, so the whole market became crippled, uh, and the price of their goods uh, also uh, fell because of that. I mean, every, it was fucked everywhere. So they created daylight savings time to kind of get an hour back. Get a little work. more. Yeah, so a little you know. more work. Yeah, uh, it's interesting, though, because. In, oh, God. No, no, what were you going to say? I was just going to say it's like it, you have to have a moment in that time where you're like, well, you know what? There's a big fucking ocean there. And you're you're, right. you're you're not gonna hold me to shit. Come come and take it. That's that's immediately when it's like, oh, you know all these weird arbitrary rules we made up for each other. Come sail away. Yeah, yeah. Come on and come on and get it. Yeah. Uh, in May 1773, Parliament uh, imposed a three pence tax for each pound of tea sold. Uh, they allowed the East India Company to sell directly through its own agents. The Tea Act reduced the price of tea and enabled the company's monopoly over the colonial tea market. Uh, they were furious about this in the colonies, um, and citizens in Charleston, Philadelphia, New York, and Boston rejected the imported tea, famously culminating in the Boston Tea Fuck Party the old tea. in December 1773. This cr- so this is the other thing that started the Dos- Boston Tea Party, which led directly to the Intolerable Acts. Yeah. Uh, the crisis worsened the relationship of uh, the colonies and Britain. Um 
and yeah, this is it became it then the revolution happened. Shit. So the revolution happened. Because of two dum dums. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. I do. They sparked whatever the opposite of That's joy is. That's why we're is. here. Like, yeah. I, I'm so thankful for these fucking idiots. Like, because mm. one guy had a gambling addiction. And one, one guy, guy was just a loud mouth. Yeah. Yeah. And one guy was getting shit talked. It is incredible to me that these were the two. Like, it was literally just two fucking assholes. Yeah. But I don't know. Do you call him like a homo or something? What? what? Do, do we ever find out what was actually in the letters? Uh, Broadly speaking, yeah. Like, he, just basically, they were like, these people are animals. Just they, mud people? They are, yeah, these are gross people. We they, they shouldn't be allowed to be in charge of themselves. Yeah. Have you listened to them? Got it. Yeah. Got it. And then, obviously, all the massholes were like, hey, pal, what you, what'd you fucking say about me? You come into my house and say that shit. Pop you right in the soccer. Yeah. Pop your wife right in the fucking box. But good measure. Man, I, I do want a more historically accurate representation of Massachusetts. We should just uh, we in should, film and TV. We should just make a movie that's actually like the real American Revolution, and it's all like modern day stereotypes of the people from those places. Think you're better than me? Yeah. I, yeah. It's just like fucking like everyone from South Carolina has just got the like gay Southern accent. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. the feminine Southern accent. They're all the Lindsey Graham accent. People from fucking. I don't know what people from Virginia are, to be honest. That whole state feels like a suburb. Doesn't make sense to you. What? The state of Virginia doesn't make sense to you? Not really. I don't know what Virginia is. I have no idea. It, like, doesn't really have a city, because its only city is D.C. Yeah. And that's not even fucking in Virginia. And then, uh, yeah. It's, um... I feel like most of the people of notoriety from Virginia are from the poorer towns. Or from just the middle of nowhere. I know, like, nothing about Virginia. That's what you're saying. I don't know what Virginia is. I, I've i never really spent the, much time there. The, I have. The, I spent, like, a couple days there, but it was, like, staying in Virginia because we had to go into D.C. Is uh, Williams Williamsburg's in Virginia? Yeah. I've been there. Colonial Williamsburg. That's where we had to go for a fifth-grade field trip because 9-11 happened and we couldn't go to D.C. Damn, that's a long field trip. From Florida? Yeah. We took a bus. Yeah. Ugh. It Gross. was, uh, yeah, it was... You can take minors cross state lines if you have parental consent. Yes. Huh. You have to. S- that's what the permission slip is for. Right. That's I don't remember ever going across state lines. We would go to Harrisburg. You never did a DC trip as a kid. No. We did a we did a DC trip in eighth grade too. I didn't. We went to Intercourse, Pennsylvania in eighth grade. How much fun was that? Just making fun of that name. Blue Balls, Intercourse, Bird in Hand. There's a Blue Balls, Pennsylvania. Virginville, Paradise. They're all around each other, and they're all where the Amish live. <laughs> that's yeah. weird and on purpose. <laughs> There's no way it's not. Um, but, yeah, that's all I got for today. What would you boys learn? I learned that, amongst other things, I, I kind of reaffirmed this for me. Idiots can change the course of history. Don't it, take them lightly. I learned that I have a new appreciation for Massachusetts and Boston. Yeah. A and new they're, one? They're essentially just like our stepbrother in Philly. Boston and Philly are you one, one of the same Did you thing. just learn that? No. Because we all knew it. Re- reaffirmed it. Okay. They're really the tip of the spear. We all hate New York. Yeah. Clearly. New York was kind of a bitch during the revolution, I feel like. They were kind of always a little... They were kind of... A little fence-sitter. They were. They were. Um, who's Hitler? Um, Gotta say... Probably, unfortunately, dude that just, you know... Yeah, Fordyce. You Fordyce, yeah. Fordyce just rolling with it. Yeah. Losing um, everyone's money and then leaving for France. No, I don't know people. how you just like short the most successful company. That's in an world. insane call. <laughs> like, that's like, you know, I think I'm going to short Google. That's I, just and retarded. Like I said, he was up for a long time. So this was like the ultimate heat check. It was like, it's the bet I should never make. Like, I'm God. Yeah. Like, this is something people tell Mike Malloy, or not Mike Malloy, Tim- Timothy Dexter to right. do. And it works out for him because it's Timothy Dexter. But. Like, Oh, yeah, you should uh, sell cats to people and uh, take hot coals to the Caribbean. <laughs> Actually, take hot coals to Birmingham. Yeah, send yeah. coal to Newcastle. Yeah, or Newcastle, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, um, 
also, I guess, no, nah, it's, it's four dice. Four dice? Yeah. What an asshole. Yeah, for sure. Although, honestly, like, I don't know, just full of assholes, really. But it's funny to me that these two things you never really learn about. You learn about the Intolerable Acts. You learn about um, the Stamp Act and all that type of shit. The Boston Tea Party, obviously. But you don't hear about these little things that really actually set the stage for those things that you do read about. Yeah. It's like you can't really point at any one thing, but it's like, man, these things might have really done it. Yeah. yeah. And, well, the Boston Tea Party was certainly an inciting incident, but what there are things that? that brought people to the point where they would do a Boston Tea Party. Right. Exactly. Yeah, but it's... And apparently it's one guy. It's not worth covering. It's one idiot. Shorting. <laughs> in, in history class, you know? It's yeah. not. Even though that's hilarious. That's, I would go fucking nuts learning that. Yeah, a good teacher could really knock that out. In, like, fifth grade, though? Nah. Uh, not no, fifth but I'm grade, saying like, but, like, uh, high school. Uh, yeah, Ameri- like, yeah, for sure. Not American government, but um, American history. Yeah. High school, for sure. That would be great. Let alone college. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, that is all I got for today. Again, please leave a five-star review on Apple and Spotify. Write the review for uh, Apple. We have a uh, Patreon, patreon.com slash softcore history. Two uh, extra episodes a week. A giant, humongous, evergreen back catalog. Hours upon hours of content so you're not just getting whatever you yep. know comes out that week you have there's so much stuff and like i said it's evergreen uh merch at softcorehistory.com have a new titanic line coming out soon yeah i'll get on that it's gonna be dope we'll uh, send. actually by the time this happens we will have it on the site so that's right hats yeah. shirts sweaters yeah we'll, we'll have it all but uh yeah that's all i got for jake goldman and darren jester i'm rob fox you just got saw served <laughs>